What is your craziest one night stand story? I was on an Amtrak traveling alone. All of a sudden one of the conductors comes down the aisle and introduces himself. Then he walks away again. A few hours later he comes back and says that one of the sleeper cars wasn't occupied and asked if I wanted to sleep there instead of my seat. I was young and not well versed on the pickup game. He was handsome and I seriously just thought he was being nice. So I follow him down to the sleeper car and he stays to talk with me. He was being a gentleman and not forcing anything on me. Anyway, the sparks were there and we ended up hooking up. I fell asleep and woke up a few hours later. I went back to my seat and dozed off again. When I got up, there was a tray with breakfast and a rose. There was also a note thanking me for a wonderful night. I never saw him again. True story. Went on a date and I finally got a wanna come up to my place. I never been to her place, so I was shocked that not only it was a small size studio apartment, but she had 8 cats there. So we are doing it, while 8 cats were staring at us the whole time. When we started doing it doggy style Mr. Lemon jumped on her back. The only reason why I know his name was, because as he jumped on her back she said, Mr. Lemon, get off you naughty boy. Lost my virginity at a New Year's party. Was 17 spending the weekend with my much, 30 years, older brother. And he wanted to go out. So he ditched me at a friend's house. They had a foreign exchange student there from France. We ended up getting drunk and doing it on the sofa. While someone else was on the other sofa. Presumably watching. Never saw any of those people ever again. I was talking to a girl whose snap I found initially on Tinder. Didn't entirely think I hit it off. But there was convos here and there for a few weeks. She seemed down to fuck. But said that she couldn't do anything past 11 at night for some reason. After a shift of delivering pizza I find that a snap was sent out of her riding a dildo. I ask if she's open for me to come over. I doubt it. Go to Waffle House to get my dinner and think it'll just fizzle. But no. She messages back. Gives me an address. And I'm off into the boondocks for some fun. The all-star breakfast rots in the back. It's about 11.30 at night. My phone won't charge. And my GPS guides me onwards. After some miscommunication, I find that she lives in a rural property a half hour away. In a trailer off her family's house. I park my car off to the side of the road. And snuck into the property as her parents were likely sleeping in the house a stone's throw away. Guided by her on the phone. Flashlight leading me in. Legally. I probably could have been shot as a trespasser. Anyways. We fucked for over an hour among a flock of cats. On a couch inside the dumb trailer. Doing just about everything. And indulging her kink for people to bite her. Hard. I showered with her after. Popped my uniform back on. And guided my way back to civilization on a dying iPhone battery. Getting breakfast at McDonald's after. And never talking to her again. I. 21. Had never had a one night stand before. So. Story goes. Met a woman at a bar. We quickly get back to her place. In the morning. I have to get to work. I get dressed and head downstairs. I cross through the kitchen to get to the back door we came through last night. As I grab for the handle. I quickly glance left. And see an older woman sipping coffee. That woman happened to be my teacher from when I was in third grade. I went so red. Good god. My cheeks. We make eye contact. And I slowly exit. Lol. I didn't have runs for a long while after that. Maybe more funny than crazy. But here we are. Invited a guy I met on Bumble over because, frankly, he was the hottest man I have ever seen in real life. I thought I had won the one night a jackpot. So we did a thing. He sleeps over cause it was late, and we had some wine. And then I woke up around my usual time, which is 7 to 8 am. Homeboy was still sleeping, but I figured just leave him be, while I went about my morning routine. Dude sleeps in. In my bed. Until 11.30 am. Weird. But okay I guess. He gets dressed, and tells me he's going to the gym. I'm like, okay cool. He then asks what I want for dinner later. So he knows what to get at the store. I'm internally like a what? Like I don't remember inviting you for another night. 
but I just felt awkward, so I was like surprise me. He comes back a few hours later, arms loaded down with groceries, and sets about making dinner, steak. I allow it, because like I said, very sexy man cooking me steak in his boxes. Here for it. It was just a weird day though. While we eat we get to know each other a bit more. And I learned that homeboy sleeps in his car and showers at the gym. He is homeless. I realized right then that he was trying to move in. After one meeting, I made excuses to avoid another sleepover later and told him I'd text him. I was immediately blocking him. We say goodbye at the door and he says, with the most earnest look on his face, it was really great knowing you. He knew. TL, Dr. One Night Stand, turned out to be homeless and tried to move in. I've had more than a few one night stands in my life. The craziest, for multiple reasons, was my friend inviting me out because he was meeting up with a girl who was going to sublet her place to him and he wanted to see if she was normal or not. We go to her place and as we walk up to the house I realize it's a friend's old place and she's the new tenant. Super weird coincidence. Anyway, we go in and look at it and Essie's normal. She's extremely cute. Has two cute friends over. She invites us to have some drinks. Of course we say yes. We're all getting along. Hitting it off. And having a great time. A few more drinks go down. One of her friends. Who is a stunning Persian girl and I keep making eyes. She seemed to like the fact that I had my bike. Because she biked too. Eventually. My friend goes out to smoke with two of the girls. The Persian girl and I are alone. We look at each other and just instantly start making our zero hesitation from either of us. They come back in and she goes I need to go, but my new friend is going to bike home with me to make sure I get home okay, sure. Message received. We get on our bikes to go toward my place and start riding through a field that's enormously bumpy and both fall down. We are tanked and have no balance. We start fooling around in the middle of the field before deciding to keep making our way back. We end up walking our bikes the short distance back to my apartment and get to it. Her body is spectacular. Our chemistry is crazy. I had never eaten mass before, but I felt absolutely compelled to. We went for hours. Showered. Went again. Just one of those magical nights. We part ways hungover but feeling good. We are texting again later. Some dirty talk the next weekend, while she's at work. While we were together, she mentioned she always wanted to sleep with a girl, but it had never happened. While we are texting, I told her one of my FWB was B, and that we should initiate her. I'm describing her, name, attributes, body, etc. She stops texting me. I start texting my FWB to tell her about this girl I think she would like. An hour or so later, the Persian girl texts. And no shit. She sends a selfie with my FWB. They fucking work together. I have no idea how they broached the conversation, but it was absolutely wild to be texting them separately meanwhile they are both serving in the same restaurant. Anyway, I wish I had a conclusion about how this led to a threesome with them, but somehow it didn't. Despite the stars aligning, fun night that really makes me long for those carefree days of being in my early 20s. My one and only one night stand. New York City. Met this girl. A gorgeous former Israeli soldier through mutual friends. We hit it off. I had tickets to the Global Citizen Festival in Central Park. Black Keys. For fighters. Neil Young. She came with and we had a great time. Afterward. We were walking to the train and I went to say goodbye and she kissed me on the spot and said we are going back to my apartment and I'm fucking you. We made out the whole way back to her place on the train. She gave me one of the best blowjobs I've ever had and actually told me my dick was beautiful and we had sex twice that night. She was supposed to come to my place a few days later but it got cancelled because of Hurricane Sandy and I had to leave New York. She ended up meeting a guy on a dating app a few months later and now they are married and live in Texas. I spilt beer on my nightstand. It was my only one. I was going to have life changing cancer surgery in 3 days and the neighbors, who I'd never met, were having a massive party. I was tired, exhausted, and wanted to sleep, but the noise was out of control. 
went next door to tell them to be quieter, and ended up having a threesome with two of the guys there. Went to my surgery with high keys, like I was some teenager who couldn't control themselves. My best one night stand story is from a while back, when Tumblr was still really porn why. There was this guy who posted videos of himself jacking off on his Tumblr, and I would enjoy viewing all of the stuff he posted. I had gotten into some anonymous exhibition stuff at that time, and posted a video of myself to my Tumblr. Then I sent him a message telling him how hot I thought he was. Next thing I know he posts a video of himself jacking off to my video. Super hot. We message a few more times, and it turns out we live in different cities in the same small country. His city in particular is pretty close to the major airport. Next time I'm flying out I send him a message and tell him I'll be in his area. I stay overnight in a hotel the night before my flight and we meet up and have a really hot, mostly 69 based, hookup. Unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond my control I ended up being unable to see him again for a while and lost track of him when Tumblr banished all of the blue material. TL, doctor hooked up with a Tumblr porn model that I crushed on. I was traveling to Philadelphia from Kansas for a meeting. Halfway through the drive, my boss called me and said that the meeting was delayed and to take a week off. I didn't want to drive home to Texas, so I continued to Philadelphia to explore for a week. I checked into a hotel and drank quite a bit of whiskey before going downstairs to have a cigarette. I saw a gorgeous woman sitting outside having a cigarette as well, so I asked if I could sit with her. She was staring at her phone, so I tried to make small talk by asking her if she was from the area. It turns out she was Norwegian and just in the states for training. We talked for a while before exchanging Instagrams. At that point, her coworker showed up and I excused myself. I was back in my room completely hammered at this point when she messaged me. I asked her if she wanted to have breakfast the next morning, but she was going home. She offered to have drinks instead. We went to a steak house right next to the hotel and had a few drinks before going back to the hotel. We had talked about the TV series The Office which she had never seen before, so I asked her if she wanted to come watch. It worked. Two months later, I flew to Oslo to meet her again. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I met my wife. Had a nosebleed while going down. Not my experience, but a mate of mine's that still makes me laugh. My friend just got out of a serious relationship of a few years and got his heart broken. Spent a little while being sad and after a couple of weeks was like I'm gonna go to a bar with friends. Went out had a couple and saw a girl he had a thing with once upon a time. They catch up and she ends up saying, come back to mine tonight. They went back and did the deed. Whole night he didn't think of his ex once. My homeboy blasted all over her face, and not even a moment after he was finished, and she had spunk all over her she goes so why did you and your ex break up? Apparently all he could say was bruh, and it makes me laugh every time the story is brought up. I once met a girl on a night out of drinking. Talking a lot but, even though she wanted more, I was not interested at the time. We sent messages every now and then for about 6 months, and we found out we were both going to attend a some kind of school party. We were both 16 over 17 I think. Turned out she knew the owner of the discotheque, where it was held, and she got two VIP tickets. She was happily to give me one, if I would do her, that night. Before we went there, I lived very close to the venue. So I picked her up, and took her inside. As soon as I closed the front door she asked if someone was home, lived with my parents still OFC, and I said no. Before I could finish the O she took off her clothes. Took of mine. Did stuff. She was in full control. Right there in the hallway. One of the hottest initiatives I have experienced until this day. Of course it didn't last that long, and I think in 10 minutes we were on our way to the party. We both get crazy drunk. Because you know. VIP so free drinks. 7 hours later in the early morning I drop her off at home, and she says her parents are not there. We go inside, and I don't know what happened, but I hop on my bicycle 3 hours later to go home. We had been tearing each other apart for the full 3 hours. 
We never had any clothes on. We took showers. We had food and more drinks. We were constantly touching each other. There was no end to it, except when I went home. While writing this down I still get a boner when I think about the stuff we did, and there was not a sexless moment for more than two minutes or so. Spoke to her the next day. Then never again. Saw her about eight years later. She was still looking amazing, and she recognized me, winked at me, and went on her way. What a girl. Not my story, but a guy I worked with a while back. Told me about a girl he picked up from the bar once. Brought her home. She pissed in his bed, and left before he woke up. I was fresh out of a high school long term relationship, dated since high school into the end of university, and all my family and friends were pushing the narrative of have fun and go wild being single, since I was always in a relationship. I ended up matching with my first person on Tinder. They were very interested and asked me out on a first date. We ended up going for dinner and then having sex, half with a condom, and then I got my wits together to put one on for a magnitude of reasons. Unfortunately, I was thinking with my penis instead of my brain. She confirmed she was on birth control prior to having sex. After we finished, she was in a hurry to end the night. I assumed I was a rusty partner. I ended up ending things after the first date, since there was no spark. Turns out, exactly three months later she says that she's pregnant and is going back and forth about an abortion. She ends up not getting the abortion and is sending emotionally charged messages in paragraphs of how I shouldn't abandon my child. I ended up being such a mess over it all that my appendix exploded the following two weeks when she said that she was going to take everything I have if I didn't support our child. Reminder that I'm a fourth year student in boatloads of student debt and an unemployed. I was lucky enough to smarten up and contact a lawyer. I ended up cutting any and all communications to a bare minimum and simply stated that I was not confident that the child was mine. She continued this charade until I took a paternity test after the birth and I was thankfully cleared of any paternal connections. TL, doctor I went through turmoil for 9 months with a one night stand from my only tinder match after a LTR, so bad that my appendix burst from stress slash anxiety and needed to have a legal paternity test to prove that I was not the father. Mori. It fell apart in the middle of the night, woke me out of a dead sleep, never buy Ikea furniture, now I have no night stands. Ooh boy, okay, this was actually somewhat recently, like last fall. I'm currently separated from my wife, but we had specifically spoken about the fact that we couldn't mate eight other people, just for the record. Anyway, I was living on friends' couches and hopping between hotels. Kind of a dark time. So, as the newly single sad soon-to-be divorced guy, I fired up the dating sites. Everyone knows Tinder, every herd of field. Oh. Field. Oh my. Anyway. I generally was just chatting with attractive women on the site. If we talked for more than like a half an hour I'd come clean about my situation, because otherwise I felt like I was being dishonest. Generally people were pretty understanding. Anyway. One day out of the blue I get a message from somebody saying basically immediately hey. Do you want to come over some night to have a threesome with me and my super hot redhead friend? Her birthday is coming up. I basically said, well, I mean, let's chat for a little bit. Buy me a drink first I guess. Eventually I decide that I'm not getting murdered to on the night in question I headed out their way. So, they instruct me to park at the end of a road in a rural town. I park and somebody emerges from the woods. This is not one of the two women in question initially. Okay, now I'm getting a little bit weirded out, but I can hang. Whatever. She leads me into the woods down to the riverbank, where they're having a fire. Kind of a cool setting. Anyway, there's another dude there, who just happens to be a stripper. Okay, now I'm not like, super up on threesome etiquette. But I think general politeness would generally dictate, that you warn the guys they are not the only other guys there. Or really, that there is going to be anybody else there, that you weren't expecting. Call me old fashioned. Backslash edit, when I first got there the dude and I looked at each other, and if I read his face correctly, he's about as pumped by the situation as I am. 
There was a strange camaraderie there, I think. Well, we stand around the fire and have some drinks. I'm still wondering if I'm going to be murdered. Eventually the heat gloves come out and they bring the rocks in the fire into the sweat lodge that they had constructed on the beach. Oh, did I not mention the sweat lodge? Yeah. So everybody just unceremoniously disrobes and we sit in the sweat lodge and talk about feelings for a while. Which was less crazy feeling at this point for me than you would expect. By this time I'm essentially treating this night as an anthropological study, so I don't know what else to expect. Well, after a while it's time to go hit the bedroom apparently. We re-robe and walk over to her house. Well one thing leads to another. The mystery woman just kind of orbits, while the impromptu foursome goes down. Which again, was just kind of a bizarre experience. Oh and then, after we're all kind of just hanging out some meth pipes get busted out. So that's also a thing that happened. No. Before you ask I did not partake. Thank you very much. Yes. I got tested. I'm in the clear nobody panic. In conclusion. Dating apps are trouble. Dating. I guess this wasn't so much dating as. God I don't know what the hell I'd characterize this as. Oh. That one night I went home with a girl really drunk. And woke up in my own piss. And quietly snuck out in the AM. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a like. If you would like to see more content like this in the future. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified about future videos. Now check out one of these interesting videos.